settings for cutting down these peaks here on our snare drum and with our settings we ended up with a signal that looks something like this now. You can see the difference in this section how, how much uh, more amplitude, more volume there is here compared to this. looks very thin. There's definitely more power over this section. We've cut out a lot of the stick peaks. It's not as much sound coming from the stick there. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to turn up this uh, the snare, uh, the resonant sound of the snare higher up in the mix. So we're getting a lot more of the drum sound. It's going to make uh, a very powerful punchy snare. Now by comparing these two signals, what we've essentially done is use the compressor as an automated volume control. And that's really all it's doing. It's looking for certain peaks and controlling them by turning down volume. So your compressor is a very fast mixer, in a sense, turning up and down the faders. And that's how we're controlling the peaks. You have your microphone here. It goes into your mixer or your digital analog converter out to your computer and you have some sort of playback mechanism either through your speakers or through a PA system. So now we've, we've learned what a compressor does and how to set it up. And now I'll show you where I like to um, insert my compressors for processing. Let's say now with this typical setup most of us will have one to two, maybe four microphones. And um, we might not be using a software system. Maybe we're just using a mixer going into our computer. If you have access to a compressor, uh, what normally happens is if you have one compressor to use, like a hardware system, you're going to put the compressor on the output bus on the uh, left and right output and that's simply going to control your output levels from going into the red and clipping. If you're using a software system like I am, Cubase, Pro Tools, Logic, whatever you have, uh, GarageBand, you can set up your mixer to use compression on pretty much any channel. You don't have to use it on every channel. Um, typically you're going to have it on the output bus or some sort of output group. Now what I've done is I set up a group fader for my snare, my toms, you can see here, and they all go to the drums. So this indicates where it's outputting to. So if you're using multiple microphones on your snare drum, let's say you have uh, the overheads, the close mic on the snare, maybe you have a, a microphone on the bottom skin, then you can group all those microphones into one channel and you can control your volume using one fader instead of messing around with four faders. Now you can put a compressor on the group channel. You can also set up an effect channel which I have here as well and this is the compressor channel here so if um, if you recall what I'm doing is I am sending my sorry I'm going to move this into the center I'm sending my snare signal to the reverb and to the compressor so I have essentially the original signal here which I'm controlling with this fader this is controlling the close mic on the snare and this is considered a raw signal there's no processing on this fader here so I'm getting just the uh, 
natural sound of the snare. I'm also sending an auxiliary signal to the compressor and one to the reverb. So this is corresponding with this guy here. Um, let me center that. It's corresponding with this compressor channel here. And the reverb, let's see if I can show you both here. The reverb is corresponding to this reverb channel. So I've turned one microphone into three channels now. So I've got the original, I've got a reverb, and I've got a compressor. Okay, and the benefit of having the effect on a fader is I can I can control the amount of compression using a fader in real time. You can automate this. You can blend it in with the original signal. It just it gives you more options that way. It's just easier access as well. Okay, so your reverb your original signal and your compressor are all going to the output which is located here this is the output bus so all those signals are going to the output they're getting mixed and that's the final product of what you're hearing okay so you can have a compressor on your snare group channel you can have the compressor on its own fader and you can also put a compressor here on the output. Okay. So the compressor on the output is controlling the entire mix, whether it be drums, if you have a band, you're mixing guitar or bass. You're also controlling those uh, signals as well by using a compressor on the output. Um, using more than one compressor on the drum kit on the snare drum channel you're basically splitting up the work you're not you know you're not loading all the work onto one compressor and trying to smash those peaks down all at once you can you can do them in steps so let's say on the snare fader you can you know go two to one three to one ratio do a really subtle cut and then on the output bus maybe do one or two really subtle so the total ratio is closer to five that way you know and the overall effect is not as uh, it's not as noticeable you don't want to hear the compressor c coming on and, and cutting off your signal okay and another thing you can do is use the compressor as a limiter so you often see when you look up compression they'll have compressor limiter and the compressor using a threshold and your ratio will allow you to set it up as a limiter so really aggressive <clears throat> ratio this is only 8 to 1 you can go higher on some compressors uh, like 20 30 to 1 and set your threshold for let's say minus one or zero okay uh, you don't want to go too much less because if you're if you're limiting your output to minus 10 you've really um, reduced the output power of your mix it's gonna sound really low and weak so you can leave it I can leave it uh, normally around minus one zero depending on the mix and the music I've never come across uh, an instance where you'd have to go lower than zero I'm sure there are uh, scenarios where you need to do that I'm just not aware of them right now um, so you set your threshold to zero on the limiter and you turn your ratio up to 10 20 31 really aggressive and when that's going to do is any signal approaching zero it's going right to the top well it's gonna cut your peak by 30 times so if you get one decibel over it's gonna cut it down 30 times 
so it's not going to clip. And that's how a limiter works. It kind of just slams up and stops. And you can see that effect here. The signal will come up and stop. It's not going to let it through if you have a really aggressive ratio. Alright, so you put a limiter on the output bus to prevent your signal from clipping. And you know, if, if your mix, if your faders aren't set up properly, you know, I, in the original video I said turn them down to 10, negative 10 decibels. If you have them all cranked at zero and your output bus is screaming, that limiter is going to be working really hard and it's going to make the, the mix sound terrible because the limiter is basically, it's going to be cutting those peaks all the time. It's going to sound really odd. So, got to be careful how you set your faders initially. If you have a really good foundation in the beginning, then uh, you don't have to worry about the output as much. So, I hope that made some sense. Now I'll move on to um, how, to, how I build my sound. Okay, so what you're hearing now is just a single channel uh, CAD microphone over the snare drum. Let me show you how, to, how I build my sound. And I'm using a very expensive microphone so you can you know, get an idea of what kind of sound you can get by using uh, different types of processing and and volume and EQ and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to leave this as is. There's, um, there's nothing on this channel other than your uh, your volume, which is your fader setting here. And I have two sends set up, one for a reverb channel and one for a compressor. And I'm going to show you where those are on my mixing software here. I have the reverb here and a compressor here. So I'm going to add a little bit of reverb so you can hear what the parallel processing sounds like. So it sounds, to me it sounds pretty good. It sounds a little thicker, you get a little more sustained now, um, a little more tail coming off the uh, the shot and snare and without the original signal it would sound a lot weaker I'll see if I can demonstrate that now I'll go back to the snare channel and I'm just going to add a reverb here uh, So you can get a sense of how that sounds as compared to uh, the parallel processing. This doesn't sound nearly as uh, upfront and, and powerful, in my opinion. Okay, now I'm going to show you what the compressor sounds like along with the uh, original snare. Now you can hear more ping. You can hear a little more reflection off the room maybe. It almost sounds like there's a natural reverb happening there. Hear that uh, reverb effect? That's the compressor. It's, um, it's simply bringing up all the subtle signals that you couldn't hear before. They were buried way, way low in the mix. So you almost don't need any reverb effect at all because the compressor is doing it for you. So I'm going to turn that down a bit. The compressor makes it sound a little more, uh, a little more punch to it. So I'm going to show you now. You turn up the uh, overheads. You can hear the clarity come through now because 
the overheads are uh, condensers. They're picking up a lot of the uh, the high end. 